scrolling. You know, that thing you do with your thumb on your phone? It's probably how you found this video right now, isn't it? And you do it all the time. As a matter of fact, if you're like most people, hundreds of millions, billions of people on Earth, scrolling is what you spend almost all of your free waking time doing. That is, if you're awake and you have a spare moment where you don't absolutely have to be doing something else, almost instinctually, mindlessly, your hand is going to your phone and you're scrolling. And again, it's not just you. Billions, potentially, of people are scrolling now or will be scrolling at some point today, and yet nobody's talking about it. Isn't that strange? Something that everyone is doing as a matter of course, and nobody's talking about it, but we're going to talk about it. I have been waiting, delaying, I don't know, I couldn't figure out should I do this little video series, but I've decided that I'm going to do it. I think the world will be better if even a few more people understand what's going on. And so I'm going to do a little video series on the world that you live in, because you probably don't even recognize the world that you live in. You're probably not even aware that you live in the attention economy. And so I'm going to give a little overview in this like introductory video, and then I'm going to go into each of the little pieces. It'll be like 10 minute videos. I don't know how many videos it'll be. Maybe it'll be five, maybe it'll be 10, maybe it'll be an ongoing conversation, who knows? But these concepts is something that I need to get out and I need to talk about. So why am I qualified? Why am I someone who can even talk about these things? I've been in the attention economy since basically it began. I've been a software developer and built some of the early social media companies. I'll tell you how early I started my first streaming media company 20 years ago. I'm listed as the inventor on a patent. It's the one patent before I decided patents are BS that I'm listed as an inventor on. Those of you who know my government name, you'll be able to find it. Those of you who find the patent, you'll be able to find my government name. It's from spring of 2007 was when it was filed. It's approved, it's published. Uh, the iPhone didn't come out until June of 2007. And why that's kind of a notable thing in terms of dates is it's a patent for the insertion and tracking of ads, dynamic ads in podcasts. So that is to say I had a patent filed and a system that I had built for putting ads and tracking ads in podcasts before there was even a phone on which somebody could listen to or view a podcast. The iPhone didn't come out until months after the patent itself was filed, and I had been working on these things for years before. So for those of you who have followed me on certain platforms because of my roles on TV in the, uh, like in the 2010s, yeah, surprise, surprise, even before that I was a senior software developer already, and that's what I do now. So let's talk about your scrolling. Let's talk about how we got to this point. Fundamentally, what's going on, most of the time, you're probably on what is a free service, right? Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, for the most part, right? We'll talk about when it's not free. On those free services you're going through, one of the things that you should keep in mind as we go through this, if it's free, you're the product. How do these companies make money? Ostensibly, these companies make money by selling ads. And who do they sell ads to? They sell ads to advertisers, people who are going to buy the ads. And who are, who are those advertisers advertising to? Well, technically, they're advertising to you. And so what do these companies need to do? What is their job? Jeffrey Hammerbacher, in 2011, a great quote that I've, I've used many times, he was one of the first 100 people to be hired by Facebook. He was the person that Mark Zuckerberg, he's also the founder of a company called Cloudera. Mark Zuckerberg sent him off on a project. He called him, he's one of the first data scientists. And Mark Zuckerberg sent him on a project to say, why do some people spend more time on Facebook and others don't? And he had all this data that he gave to him. And Jeffrey Hammerbacher figured it out. And he's got this quote in this article that was, I, be I believe it's Forbes, it might be Bloomberg from 2011, where he said, 
the greatest minds of my generation are concerning themselves with making people click ads, and that sucks. And that's how this all started. Engagement. The idea was, how do we make somebody stay on our site for as long as possible? And in the early days, like what I was working with, it was about, well, let's find the best content. It was kind of like the way that TV had done it, right? How do you stop someone from our generation, right, where you had 100 channels but no smart TVs, and you would click, click, click. They called it channel surfing. It's basically the old school, the proto equivalent of scrolling, channel surfing. How do you make someone stop on something? And so as they went on to track over these last 15 years, Facebook is 2007, over these last 15 years, the systems that they've built, this is where the algorithms come in. This is where now artificial intelligence, AI is coming in. What has happened is in this economy, entire systems have been built to figure out what makes you stop and watch. What is the command to look for you? And these systems now at this point, it doesn't matter whether it's anything good, anything wholesome, anything that adds to your life. As a matter of fact, it could be something that detracts from your life. It could be something that, like what happens on TikTok, actually has a, a, a weird infectious thing where like all of a sudden young girls are getting Tourette's or people are doing stupid challenges that end up getting them hurt or killed. The algorithm, it doesn't care. And the AI that's been built to help the algorithm learn and now to start participating in the content, those things don't care. All they care about is grabbing your attention. It's the attention economy. Now, the interesting thing is these companies, many of these companies, particularly companies like Twitter, which are still up and used by many, many people, Twitter hasn't really been profitable for most of the years that it's been there. And so what we have is a change coming. Because what we're seeing and what we've seen over the last months, if you've been paying attention to the revelations of the Twitter files, the real revelation there is that how Twitter is really useful, how these systems are really useful as are as systems of control, weapons that can be used to control populations. And if you think that they weren't weaponized in t from 2020 forward, well, you don't really understand. Go and look at the profits that Big Pharma made to see how these things were weaponized and used for hundreds of billions of dollars to be given to certain parties to fight wars. What we now have to understand and what we're now moving to is we're moving into a new phase. We're participating in these platforms, okay? What's coming is, I'm gonna use this word, but what's coming is something akin to enslavement. Hopefully what we'll do in this series as we move through is I'm going to show you the plantation. I'm one of the people who helped build it, start to build it 15 years ago, and I've got the receipts. I'm going to show you the plantation, because you can't leave the plantation if you don't know you're a slave. So we're going to draw a blueprint of the plantation, and then we're going to talk about how we might be able to move outside of it. But hopefully, today, the next time you grab for your phone and you start to scroll, understand you're the product. You are the product. You are being sold. That's all a hamster wheel. It's all a cage. It's all a means for you to be sold and for you to teach them, to teach machines how to sell you more effectively, how to enslave you even better. So hopefully the next videos will be up uh, soon. I'll try not to wait too long. Maybe we'll do this every couple of days. But thanks for checking this out. And of course, if you have any comments on this or want to talk about it, let's start a conversation because it's very, very important. So I'll talk to you soon.